If you're looking for a simple explanation of how the inverse square law relates to audio production, you've come to the right place. But if you're new here, welcome. My name is Kyle. If you want to learn audio production online, subscribe to Audio University. The inverse square law describes the reduction of a sound's intensity over distance. We all intuitively know that sounds get quieter the further they travel from their sources. But have you ever wondered why? Jumping straight into the math might be more confusing than helpful. Let's visualize the math in action first, and then we'll learn the formulas that describe the inverse square law. As a sound wave travels away from its source, it creates a sphere of acoustical energy. The sound wave carries a finite amount of energy, which is spread thinner and thinner across the surface area of that sphere as the sphere grows larger. The sphere on the left has a radius of two feet, while the sphere on the right has a radius of four feet. The sound source is located at the center of each sphere. So think of the radius as the distance between you and the sound source. While the radius of the second sphere is only twice the radius of the first sphere, the surface area of the second sphere is four times the surface area of the first sphere. The energy from the sound source is now spread out over four times the surface area, resulting in four times less energy per square meter. If you prefer to learn with mathematical formulas, this section is for you. To calculate the energy loss, we first need to know the area of that sphere. The formula used to find the area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. In this formula, r represents the radius of the sphere, or the distance from the sound source to the wavefront. To find the intensity at a given distance away from the sound source, divide the power at the sound source by the surface area of the wavefront. The formula looks like this. Thus, the intensity of a sound wave at a given distance from the source is proportional to the inverse square of that distance, hence the inverse square law. The inverse square law helps us calculate the intensity level along the surface area of the wavefront. However, our ears and microphones measure pressure level changes at only a small point along this surface area. To predict sound pressure level changes at a given distance from the source, the inverse distance law is used. A doubling of distance results in a six decibel loss in both pressure and intensity level. For example, the sound at the microphone is 100 dB SPL from four centimeters away from the speaker. At double that distance, eight centimeters, the sound pressure level is 94 dB SPL. If you double that distance again to 16 centimeters, the sound pressure level drops another 6 decibels to 88 dB SPL. While the inverse square law and inverse distance law are useful tools for solving real-world problems, the simple relationships shown in this video assume theoretical conditions. The first assumption is an omnidirectional point source a sound source that radiates sound evenly in all directions. The second assumption is a free field condition in which there are no nearby boundaries or obstructions. A nearby obstruction could provide a reflection, causing less loss over distance than the inverse square law or inverse distance law would predict. The inverse square law describes something we already understand on a basic level that sounds get quieter the further they travel from their sources. You can use it to predict the sound intensity at a given distance away from the sound source. To predict sound pressure level, the inverse distance law is used. Just be sure to keep in mind the assumptions of both of these laws. Thanks for watching this video. If you got value, hit the like button and subscribe to Audio University. Also check out the website at audiouniversityonline.com.